NASA has made a stunning discovery on Mars. The red planet is home to a trove of precious stones known as opals. But that's not all. The moon is calling out to us again, and NASA is gearing up for a return trip with plans to establish a permanent presence. So what are NASA's plans to stay? Keep watching for more information on these in this video. Starting us off, NASA discovers precious gemstones on Mars. On Mars's surface, researchers think they found a trove of precious stones. And no, we're not referring to diamonds. Instead, research published in the Journal of Geophysical Research found that the red planet's Gale Crater is teeming with opals, according to a team of Arizona State University and NASA-affiliated experts. Let's get this out of the way. The coldest flex in the solar system sounds like bling iced out with priceless stones from another planet. However, there is also a scientific relevance to the discovery, which implies that the region had enormous water reserves much more recently than we previously believed. In light of this, the discovery could also prompt us us to revise our understanding of early Martian life. In photographs captured by NASA's Curiosity rover over the last few years, scientists have discovered fracture halos of lighter colored rock. They hypothesize that these halos are likely mainly composed of opal, a bluish hydrated material. However, it turns out that these hidden treasures seem to be much more numerous than previously believed, according to the new research, and are spread throughout the Gale Crater, a vast old lake bed that Curiosity has called home for the past. 10 years. According to lead author Travis Gabriel, an Arizona State postdoctoral fellow, their new study of archival data revealed a startling resemblance between all of the fracture halos they detected much later in the mission. He added that it was remarkable to see that these fracture networks were so broad and possibly loaded with opal. The finding is especially noteworthy because silica dissolves in water to produce opals. Long after much of the water had already vanished from the planet's surface, subsurface portions of the crater may have been previously protected from the severe conditions and radiation at the surface. According to Gabriel, it's plausible to suppose that these potentially livable subsurface conditions extended to many other portions of Gale Crater as well, and maybe in other regions of Mars, given the extensive fracture networks seen in Gale Crater. He also said that these ecosystems would have arisen long after Gale Crater's old lakes dried up. These stones could even serve a far more significant role in the end, rather than finally finding their their way into the intergalactic bling. Future astronauts trekking on the surface of Mars may need a reliable source of water, and the water and silica that make up opals are effortless to separate. Researchers have demonstrated in studies that a single three-foot stretch of shattered halo may discharge around 1.5 gallons of water inside the top foot of the surface. Up next, the moon beckons again, and this time NASA wants to stay. President Obama urged NASA to concentrate its human exploration missions beyond the lunar surface to an asteroid and Mars during a speech at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida in 2010. At that time, the moon was NASA's primary priority. Since then, the U.S. has changed its strategy with NASA's exploration objectives once again centered on the moon. During the Artemis program, developed under President Donald Trump's watch and endorsed by the Biden administration, NASA has actual momentum and political backing from both parties for one of the most ambitious human space travel initiatives in decades. After the Artemis 1 mission, there will be further astronaut manned missions, with the first one orbiting the moon and the last touching down there. However, despite the advancements, Obama's anxiety that the space program has already been done in the past still looms over it. Why go back to the moon? Uh, according to Thomas Zerbuchin, the recently retired chief of NASA's science mission directorate, the existence of water is the starting point for the answer. In an interview, Zerbuchin remarked that it was vital to remember that they were coming back to a moon that was highly different from the moon they left when they flew off during Apollo. It was a moon that was completely dry. He added that their perceptions of the moon are vastly different. As a result, a permanent presence on the moon has become a key component of NASA's long-term space plans. It will allow the program to experience living in space sustainably. Next, the importance of water to humans and science on the moon. In addition to being essential for maintaining human life, water's component elements, hydrogen and oxygen, may be used as rocket fuel, turning the moon into a gas station in outer space. The ability to recharge on the moon rather than dragging all the fuel from Earth might be crucial for long-duration missions. The moon also makes for a comparatively simple launching pad to distant parts of the solar system because its gravity is just one-sixth that of the Earth's. The moon, too, has a tale to tell, one about how the solar system formed and another about how Earth came to be. It's a time capsule without an atmosphere. The footprints of the Apollo astronauts are still visible, unaltered by weather or wind, as are the scars left 
by the asteroids and comets that bombarded Earth for billions of years during the early solar system's development. However, it is undoubtedly about the road to life, according to Zubuchin, and he added that it's less about discovering life itself. He continued that the violent processes that formed our planets and damaged their surfaces might teach us a lot about our solar system from the moon. Following that, the challenges of traveling and living on the moon. It's challenging to get to the moon, it's significantly more difficult to live there, and NASA needs more expertise. The final Apollo crew, Apollo 17, stayed on the moon for the most extended time, in just over three days. That was back in 1972. A significant investment in new technology and resources will be necessary to transition from short-term probes to long-term lunar habitation, from exploration to growth. This is why NASA wants to put a nuclear reactor on the moon. It's one of several efforts launched by NASA as part of its Artemis program, which aims to assist astronauts in staying on the moon for extended periods when they'll require power, transportation, and access to its resources. They'd require dwellings, rovers, mining equipment, and tools to extract the water and shape the lunar regolith, known as moon soil, into habitat bricks. The initiative is still in its early phases, and the long-term financing NASA will require has not yet been fully realized. Despite the agency's senior executives' optimistic expectations, a sustained presence is still years away, and the technical obstacles are enormous. However, NASA has started working on the technology required to keep humans alive for a long time on the surface. Three businesses were given contracts from the agency and the Energy Department in June last year for $5 million each to work on developing nuclear power systems that may be ready to launch by the end of the decade for a test on the moon. The systems would last around 10 years and provide 40 kilowatts of power, sufficient to power six to seven American families. Pam Melroy, a former astronaut and the deputy NASA administrator, stated in an interview that humanity could create a house using resources found on Earth. NASA is financing various projects in this area, so we should consider using lunar regolith to develop facilities. The former NASA administrator, Jim Bridenstine, noted in an interview that many individuals are unaware of how harmful the regolith is, how devastating it is to spacesuits and human lungs. The regolith that entered the capsule on several Apollo flights was so fine and sharp that it was highly hazardous. Another issue is figuring out where the water is on the moon and how to get to it. NASA intends to employ the Viper, or Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover. According to NASA, it will spend 100 days exploring the moon's south pole. According to Melroy, by mapping the location of the ice, Viper will aid in the efficient use of in situ resources. Finally, the opportunities the moon provides. The moon provides several difficulties. However, it also provides a massive opportunity as NASA works to establish a permanent population on what some call the eighth continent. It is only three days away, close enough to return home in an emergency, as the crew of Apollo 13 did, and is an ideal location for learning how to live sustainably in deep space. According to the Planetary Society, the lunar poles contain at least 600 billion kilos of water ice, enough to fill 240,000 Olympic-sized pools, and an on-the-ground probe might reveal massive quantities more. According to Clive Neal, a professor of Earth Sciences at the University of Notre Dame, the timing is now opportune to take a great leap by using the moon to learn how to live off the land, enabling continued human presence on Earth while generating a new sector of our economy. The moon has platinum group elements, rare earth metals, and helium-3, a possible nuclear fusion fuel. He said the resources might help boost the lunar economy, supporting a long-term stay. NASA depends on a solid private space industry for the Artemis mission, led by SpaceX, which was awarded the contract to build the spacecraft that NASA would employ to transport its personnel to and from the moon's surface. Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos' company, has also set its eyes on the moon. Like SpaceX, Blue Origin is developing a spaceship for NASA that can transport humans and goods. Additionally, Blue Origin has recently employed several specialists in extracting lunar resources, including water. It announced earlier this year that it would acquire Honeybee Robotics. This firm develops systems for severe conditions and has produced technology used on the Mars Perseverance and Curiosity rovers. The company's website claims that its cutting-edge technologies make it feasible for scientists to acquire, contain, and study planetary regolith samples across the solar system. In addition to the elusive asteroids and comets, they have created, constructed, and tested gear for every planet between Mercury and Saturn. So that's it, guys. While NASA just discovered Opal, these precious gemstones are destined to be valuable. Also, when do you think NASA will be able to make a permanent presence on the moon? Let's hear your comments in the section.
section below. Please remember to subscribe and thank you for watching.